Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And um, for those of you, while we start this out, for those of you who may not have seen the program before, of course, we talk about military veterans issues and uh, some of the people that are uh, involved. Uh, today, my guest is Mr. Rene Patasio. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll be talking with him in just a moment. He's a veterans advocate that's been around for quite some time, does a lot of good things uh, for the military and veterans. Uh, but before we do, this being uh, Memorial Day weekend, just wanted to put a few things out there about what's happening. Uh, on Sunday, there is a candlelight vigil that will be held at Punch Bowl, and that will start between 5 and end around 7. And for those of you who may not have participated in the program before, it's very moving. It's a way of, um, you know, showing our respect for those who have paid the ultimate price. Um, unfortunately, sometimes we have more veterans there than we have uh, people on the civilian side. But if you really want to get to talk to some of the veterans and hear some of their experiences and, you know, sharing the camaraderie, that's a good place. And it would be, uh, again, starts at uh, Sunday at 5, between um, twi 5 and 7. And also on Monday, starting at 8.30 at uh, Punch Bowl, there's a ceremony there. And again, it's open to the public, but if you're going to go, uh, might want to get there a little bit early because parking may be a little bit difficult anyhow. And on Monday, there'll be a um, lantern floating ceremony down at uh, Ala Moana. And I think that starts uh, at about 2 p.m. Yeah. In the, well, I'm sorry. Some 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Yeah. That's the best one. Okay. And also, for you veterans out there who are trying to get your cap cards, and if you're not familiar with that, that's the uh, access card that you'll need to get on the, on the tripler. Uh, though I think they changed that, uh, I think, effective sometime in the next couple months where you're going to have to have that to make it uh, easier for you to gain access. You're still not going to be denied access to the uh, tripler facility, but this will make it a little bit more easier if you do have that card. And also down at the Oahu Veterans Center, they have uh, the Vetmobile. That will be uh, coming there, I think, this the third Thursday of every month. And there's a lot of good information that you can get from down there uh, concerning health care, the VA representatives who will be there to talk to you. And um, it's a great facility. If you haven't been there before, uh, go down and talk to Claire Levinson. She's uh, the executive director, and she can point you in the right direction as far as getting additional information with some of the things you need. But at this moment, I want to introduce to the program, Renee. May I call you Renee? Please. Okay. Uh, a little bit back to yourself. Like, uh, you were in the military before? Yes. I served 26 years in the Navy, yeah. 13 years as an enlisted, mm -hmm. and 13 years as a chief warrant officer. Okay. Was that considered a Mustang or? That's what they call us. Okay. <laughs> For those of you in the civilian world, we. Uh, <laughs> When you transition from enlisted to civilian, it's, I mean, not civilian, to officer, officer yes. you know, um, that takes some doing, anyhow. Good. Well, what were some of your military experiences? So what? I was mostly in personnel and administration, mm -hmm. and uh, I served also for five years in, with the intelligence community mm -hmm. at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, just mostly administration. Yeah. Good. Um, I know that you've been around for a while, anyhow, because before... One thing I do want to talk about, I know you're involved with the Veterans Treatment Court. Yes. Could you tell the audience a little bit about that? Because this is something that was uh, basically spearheaded by Judge uh, Edward Kubo. Yes. Yeah. Could you tell our viewers about that? Of course. Veterans Treatment Court is a program uh, started by the judicial system to help veterans who are involved with the law. Mm -hmm. Most of them were usually incarcerated on different types of crimes. Right. And Veterans Treatment Court is a program offered for them so they can get out of imprisonment, uh, go through, offer them some uh, counseling, rehab programs, and sometimes even them offer them jobs, work with uh, the civilian sectors to offer them jobs so they can, when they get out of imprisonment, they can go to a, we may say, a little bit of a more normal life instead of being locked up. Right. Uh, for them to be able to earn a little bit of income so they can pay for their fines and any, any other expenses incurred with, with their uh, uh, imprisonment. Right. 
And uh, it's a two-year program. It's a very wonderful program. As a matter of fact, uh, they consider Hawaii has the highest success rate uh, in the entire program. Uh, it's a two-year program where they really have to go through with the help of mentors like me, and of course you too, you've also been a mentor, uh, to kind of just be a sounding board for them or kind of a, like a, a big brother to lean on to in right. case they get a little bit sidetracked mm -hmm. and to steer them in the, in the right direction right. Uh, so that they can move on. So after two years of the program, they graduate and then they go to their normal lives. Mm -hmm. I personally have three veterans who were who graduated from the program already mm -hmm. and went on to uh, be in the civilian community, join their families, and on to their normal life. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for this program, so people won't misconstrued, this is not a get out of jail free card or nothing like that. No. This is they have to really earn. Yes. You know, so go through the program, be due diligent as far as going through the different programs, things of that nature, and yeah. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned you had three graduates so far? Yes. Okay. What encouraged you to get involved with the uh, treatment court? You know, where I came from back in the Philippines, because I grew up in the Philippines, mm -hmm. born and raised in the Philippines, and what we had in the Philippines before I joined the military, compared to now, is almost like a 180 degree turnaround. Mm -hmm. I came from very, very humble beginnings, and considering what I have now, I'm truly grateful with how I have turned around, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, not really in a bad way, if not from a bad way to yep. uh, a, a great way, but uh, it's, it's one way of really helping me and my family and then uh, it's my way of me giving back to the community, yeah. to the organization who really embraced me mm -hmm. and took care of me under their wings. Yeah. Um, I have actually dedicated the rest of my life helping veterans. Yeah. Um, and I have also been involved with uh, uh, trying to help veterans who have physical, mental, or any other types of challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's why I also offer with uh, uh, being a member of the Vietnam Veterans of America, I now chair their PTSD committee. Oh, okay. Because there were, you know, a lot of people don't want to admit they have PTSD because of the stigma of the illness. And sometimes people in the military, especially the active duty folks, yeah. are kind of reluctant to admit that they have PTSD or turn themselves in for treatment because that would then be a negative mm -hmm. part of their record right. that would probably hinder them from getting the assignments they want or the promotion they need and right. so on. So that's why PTSD is a little bit kind of sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so I work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I'll lead a panel of uh, professionals, mm -hmm. doctors, psychologists, even an artist, mm -hmm. Uh, to try to find some ways of really, not just helping PTSD people, but any veterans who have challenges with their health, mm -hmm. their mental, physical challenges, mm -hmm. or just about anything in life. Yeah. Because, you know, stress gets us. Well, this conference is gonna be open to the public or? Mostly for veterans. For veterans, yeah. Um, if there are some veterans out there uh, who would like to attend. As a matter of fact, we've sent the invitation to the VA and to Oahu Veterans Center also. Yeah. So if they have some interested parties who would like yeah. to come, they're more than welcome to come and listen and to the panel. The location and time again? 19, oh no, I'm sorry, 1298 Kukila Street, oh, okay. uh, Honolulu, uh, 96818. It's uh, close to the uh, stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Oahu Veterans Center. Oh, Oahu wow, Veterans Center, okay. Yeah, um, you mentioned about the PTSD, you know, and the stigma sometimes even within the military community. Yes. Where, you know, um, uh, I know they're just still trying to make that transition from looking at this as a weakness, as something like say that, you know, it's not a character flaw, but uh, if you go through some of the horrendous experiences, you know, that a lot of our men and women go through, you know, 
you can't put words into play on how it affects in the individuals, you know? I know they do have one program, the PRRP program, and that's yes. held at um, uh, Tripler right. for individuals who go through, you know, have are voluntarily go into the program to address their PTSD, you know, syndrome, you know? And that takes a lot of courage right there, you know? Absolutely. All those individuals that go through this, you know? Uh, it's one thing getting orders to be sent into combat and following certain things, but when you voluntarily, when you uh, realize that there are certain things that you need to do the correct to not only for yourself, but your family and the kid and your community. Yes. It takes a lot of bravery, you know, to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just a service member or the veteran who is involved <coughs> because when you have that illness, mm. your family, children, spouses, yeah. even the people around you, mm. they, they are affected yeah. because sometimes when you have the triggers, mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to react. Yeah. They think that you have gone, whatever, crazy yeah. sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's, it's sometimes it's out of control. Yeah, I think it's still at a point where we, excuse me, we talk about the rates of suicide. You know, especially among veterans. You know, that's not really talked about. You know, and I think some people when they get to the point where. You know, they go through the different programs, but sometimes there may be something that's not quite you know, falls into place for them. Yes. And then that sense of hopelessness comes in, and then they feel that their only option is to go ahead and, you know, do the ultimate, you know. So, um, you know, it's, I think with some of the programs you're talking about, yes. it's good for family members sometimes to recognize, like say, that they may be at that breaking point, you know, and we maybe we need to do a little bit more comforting, you know, to help them get through that hump or over that, you know, situation, you know, where they can regroup, get refocused, and, you know, continue to march anyhow, you know, so. Tell me about it, because I've been there too. I've yeah. been on deployments where I'm completely <coughs> separated from my family, mm -hmm. and you couldn't help but just think of them, but yeah. there's nobody to turn to. Mm -hmm. And at times you could really be depressed, yeah. and you go down to your lowest point where you know, you could think of the unthinkable, mm -hmm. and sometimes people do that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, December, I was invited to the Suicide Prevention Task Force mm. in Schofield, oh. and they had some uh, mostly active duty people and some people who work at the, uh, uh, the fitness center, uh, people who provide uh, support for these people. Yeah. And <coughs> I offered them what I have, and meditation is really what I, I do. And I've learned meditation about five years ago or so with Transcendental Meditation. Mm -hmm. But I, when I moved to Hawaii, I met a teacher who introduced me to Tao Meditation, mm -hmm. which is completely way out of scale compared right. to Transcendental Meditation. Mm -hmm. And I have used, transcend not Transcendental Meditation, but Tao Meditation mm -hmm. to really help ease the mind of people who have challenges trying to quiet their mind yeah. or having some challenges with pain and so on. So when I introduced uh, meditation to the uh, Suicide Prevention Task Force, mm -hmm. five minutes of meditation, everybody says, Wow, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I've introduced Tao meditation also at the Veterans uh, Oahu Veterans Center when we had the uh, uh, Vietnam Veterans of America last yeah. month, and we brought calligraphies, yeah. which is now what I'm working on, mm -hmm. to help uh, people focus, right. get that monkey mind mm -hmm. into stillness, yeah. right. because when you're still, you can now get into your creativity right. and the mind settles. Yeah. Speaking of quiet time, yes. we're gonna have to take a short break. Okay. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is of course continue this anyhow. All right. But your stay tuned, Hawaii in uniform. We'll be back. Minasankonnichiwa. 日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てください。
ポストの国瀬ゆかりでしたアロハ Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Pocket. Okay, you're back with Hawaii Uniform. I'm getting them your host, Calvin, and、uh, got Renee here.、Um, you were talking about、uh, the meditation. You、yes. know, there's one thing I know within the VA system, sometimes there's systemic problems that develop, you know, or things that are missed, you know, with the treatments and everything else. And I think that、uh, when I see there are the veterans or, you know, maybe military personnel, Who are taking it on their own to see about alternative types of、mm-hmm. treatments, you、yes. know, that are more cost effective, you know, and not only cost effective, but more effective as far as the overall, you know, medical protocol for helping out, you know. Do you see that? Or, oh, yes, absolutely.、Uh, as a matter of fact, the president of the chapter of Vietnam Veterans of America、mm-hmm. here in Oahu、mm-hmm. uh, mentioned that, and I've used it too.、Uh, when, The last time I went to the VA, my doctor said, You know, I have a remedy for your、uh, back problem. Have you tried acupuncture before?、Mm-hmm. I said, Yes. He says, Do you have any acupuncturists that you have in mind? You know, as long as they are a vendor、yeah. in the VA program,、yeah. VA system, you can go there using your choice program,、mm-hmm. Veterans Choice Program. Oh, I didn't know that. Where, because mostly, VA does not have an acupuncturist、mm-hmm. or a chiropractor.、Mm-hmm. So they now give you that opportunity to choose the provider you want that is not available in the VA system.、Right. Go there and receive treatment from that provider and reimbursed by the VA.、Mm-hmm. And I went to my chiropractor one time, and uh, uh, who happens to be a vendor of VA.、Mm-hmm. And when I was done with the session, She asked me, So, when are you coming back for your next session? I said,、mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I have to check with VA first.、Uh, and she told me, You know, when VA approves it, it's usually for eight sessions.、Uh-huh. I said, Oh, that, that's nice to know. She said,、uh-huh. Okay, then let's schedule it then.、Yeah. Then, two days later, I get a re- letter from VA saying, I'm approved for 17 sessions of、mm-hmm. acupuncture.、Okay. So,、uh, like meditation, Dao meditation is also.、Um, An approved vendor at the VA, because、mm-hmm. I work with the uh, uh, Master Shas Dao Center here in Honolulu,、uh-huh. who is an authorized vendor with the VA. That's where I, I learned meditation,、mm-hmm. the Dao meditation. And a few people, some veterans are coming here now、yeah. using the VA Choice Program、mm-hmm. so they can receive healing, if you may call it, because、yeah. uh, uh, it's good for their well being. Which is not available in the VA system.、Mm-hmm. As long as it's approved by the VA, then they can go there at the Dao Center,、uh, receive the healing or treatment or whatever you call it,、mm-hmm. and then VA then reimburses the center for、yeah. the cost of their treatment. Well, it sounds like something like this, excuse me, <coughs>、uh, would hit certain things off of the past because if you are going through a treatment program、mm-hmm. that is not effective, A lot of times, I mean, my, from personal experience, they'll give you all k i n d of drugs, I mean, the opiates、yes. and everything else, and next thing you know, you know, your mind is off the problem you originally had, but now you have another issue that you're dealing with. Exactly. And then trying to extricate yourself from that situation, you know, it gets more and more, you know, convoluted all the time, you know? So, with this, it's good that the system, you know,、uh, the decisions have been made, they go ahead and start, you know, utilizing these alternative types of Treatments because overall, like I say, it does cut down on money. The bottom line is, as long as it's effective you know, for the veteran or the, the individual's concern, that's the important thing. you know? Exactly. And、um, I think it's a good thing. So, hopefully, you know, the way it sounds, if there is a turnaround in the part of the VA system addressing these things, then that's a good thing. you know? But unfortunately, sometimes when things start to work, then they want to go ahead and change it later. you know? So,、uh, I don't know. It sounds like a 
good thing anyhow. Yeah, and I've read a few books about PTSD also. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of them by psychologists, mm -hmm. not psychiatrists. The, the difference between psychologists and psychiatrists, psychiatrists, you go to their session and they prescribe medication for you. Mm -hmm. Usually those antidepressants, you know, those brain altering medications. Mm -hmm. Psychologists work with you one on one without medication. Mm -hmm. And uh, most psychologists label all these medic medicines that are prescribed by psychiatrists, uh, what they called it the medication with a black box because it has a label in black that says, if you, if you take this medication, you could suffer from uh, hallucinations, mm -hmm. um, things that change your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, they label it the black box right. because in, as a matter of fact, when I was uh, interviewed or when I was working with uh, the Veterans Treatment Court, when they had the workshop, they had the uh, narcotics officer of uh, Honolulu PD mm -hmm. who said that if you are taking any medication and if that medication has side effects, mm -hmm. don't just think that you could have that that side effect. You will have those side effects. Right. So if it says uh, these are possible side effects, mm -hmm. then you may want to think twice before you take that medication because mm -hmm. you will experience right. those. That's from a narcotics officer. Good. To make sure that we don't run out of time, I want to make sure that uh, anybody veteran out there, like I say, they may be considering, you know, the types of alternative treatments. If they can contact you, or if there's a veteran out there that's having a problem with the, um, unfortunately, with law enforcement or yes. whatever, you know, to get into the drug treatment program, I'm trying to get, oh, I think Judge Kuba will be coming on, on the program yeah. sometime in the future, and we'll try to get a couple more mentors to come on we to need really more. flesh out what's going on. Yes. But in the meantime, how can they con can you be contacted, um, you know, for information about anything we discussed sure. today? Sure. I'm free to offer my... Uh my phone number. Okay. It's area code 808-800-7232. Sorry, 808-800-7232. Or they can send me an email to accord184. That's accord is spelled A-C-C-O-R-D as in Delta, 184 at gmail.com. I'd be glad to help. Okay. Um, there's one thing I want to get out, but anyhow, before we do that, um, is there anything else you want to share with the viewers about anything that of concern or that you see, you know, that you would like to address? Um, I really, like I told you earlier, I really dedicate my life just supporting veterans. Mm -hmm. The other reason why I'm doing this is because I have my oldest daughter who came up with psoriasis one day, mm -hmm. entire body covered with psoriasis, mm -hmm. except her face and her arms. Yeah. And the doctors gave her all kinds of topical solutions, uh, changed her diet, exercise, you name it. Mm -hmm. But the only remedy for them was to go through a steroid shot, right. which is only good for six months. Mm -hmm. And because of the meditation that I do, that I've learned, I have helped my daughter clear her psoriasis yeah. just doing this right. uh, meditation mm -hmm. uh, completely went away. Yeah. That's why. You know, if I could share that with others mm -hmm. without going through the, the heavy duty type medication that yeah. could potentially uh, risk their health, I mean, yeah, please okay. feel free to call me. Okay, so we're gonna have you come back on the program sometime in the future. Like I said, it's been very interesting anyhow. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do before we close that anyhow, uh, last, about a month and a half ago, there was a ceremony that was held at Punch Bowl. Yes for a gentleman by the name of Private Tillman, who was, uh, during the World War II, he was part of a major campaign um, in the Tarawa, uh, excuse me, Gilbert Islands. And uh, he was from Nevada. And unfortunately, uh, the first day he was arrived on the islands, uh, there was a heavy engagement, and he was uh, killed in action, along with a thousand other mil uh, Marines and also sailors. Um, 
he was unidentified for a number of years, and just recently um, he was identified by the um, Seal High or the uh, Central Identification Lab here in Hawaii, and they held this inter interment ceremony for him. It was very moving. Uh, even though, like I say, it had been almost 70 years since he was killed in action, it gave closure to his family. And in the past program, and I'll be very brief about this, but I will be following up on this, we had a, a gentleman by the name Renee Unst that came on the program. We discussed the POW issue and the abandonment of what was going on. Since that program, I have found more information that really corroborates a lot what people have believed about some of what may happen during the Vietnam War. The thing is, we need to follow up on this thing because we need to, we have uh, Veterans Appreciation Day, which is 29 March, but we have to give closure to these families. And no matter who is responsible, whatever it is within the system, there was a breakdown where they're not being accountable for, we owe it to these families. As Americans, as veterans, that's what we need to do. You know, and again, this is, you know, not to, People say, why bring this up at this point? Because it doesn't make any sense. It does. Because if it happened before, it can happen again. And we have an obligation as citizens and as veterans, myself, I'm pretty sure Renee shares this with me, we need to honor those. Like say, that's being done this weekend, but we have to think of those who are still suffering because of the unknown. They don't know what happened to their loved ones. And if we as a people do not stand up and be respond, hold our government be responsible for not addressing these issues, then we are less people. And I think we are much greater than that. So in the future, I will be discussing this issue. And again, it's not to open up a can of worms or try to do anything controversial, but I think we all have a moral obligation to make sure that this is addressed so we can give those individuals, those families, who loved ones have paid the ultimate price, showed, uh, shared, their lives with their fellow Americans, you know, we have to do that. If we don't do that, again, we are lost. And I think we are much better than that. So we will be talking about it and uh, from very knowledgeable individuals who are more knowledgeable than I am now. But um, we will be talking about that. And I want to thank you uh, again, um, all the ceremonies. If you can get out there and uh, punch bowl some of the other ones, please do. Talk to our veterans, thank them, thank their families, because there's so much has been done in for you, you know, in the name of our country. Renee, thanks a lot. And again, I want to thank uh, all our viewers. Um, thank you. God bless. And until that time.